All right, so in the last video, we actually talked a little bit about how this part is gonna sit out of the machine because that's important to know before we, we get going. And we also picked up um, where we're gonna pick up the part, where our G54s, we choose to call it work offset, is gonna come from. We can see that uh, all the time as they're sitting up here as a 3D gnomon up here in the corner, so that's gonna give you a good education of that. So we are ready to start applying some tool path to this part, it's kind of exciting. So what should we start with, where should we go? We're gonna start out by going over to the two, 2D here because we're gonna do everything we're doing inside of here uh, as the two, in these videos as uh, 2D. And uh, the, the, the default one is facing. What is the first one we're gonna to select too? So we have this raw piece of material, we put it inside of our, um, our machine, we have picked up the stock corner, not the, 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 the power corner, but actually the stock corner here, set that in our machine. And the first thing we want to do is facing. Now, if you hit the little arrow underneath, you will actually see the, the different two and a half axis tools that is in here. And we actually going to use um, some of them in, in, this, in these videos here. We're going to start out with the facing operation. I'm going to select that. And then it activates the property over here to, to your right. And one of the things that is neat about uh, Fusion 360 Cam is that these tabs are always in the same order. So it looks like that there's a lot of options. There is a lot of options in CAM, but if you just kind of like slow down and work your way through it and knowing that the tabs are kind of like the same through them. So the first one we always do is select our tool. We got to choose what kind of machining we want to do. And this is a facing operation. Well, pretty much what we're going to do is just make sure that we make a flat face on top of that, of that raw stock. Right, so we may be only taking off, you know, a few millimeters or, or um, um, you know, a hundred thousands of an inch or whatever unit you want to use here. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna start out by selecting a tool. So that's the first tab. Now we're gonna go over here. We're gonna select a tool, and it's gonna open up our tool selection inside of Fusion uh, 360. There's a lot of tools in here. Um, none of these are really secret. You can, secret. You can make your own. Um, you know, if you email me on Lars at camstuff.com, I'll definitely make sure that you get some of these if you need them. But there is already sampled uh, tools in here. I'm just going to go into our tutorial library. And the top one I have is called a face mill. And that's what we normally will use to face off the top of our pot. What a face mill normally is, is pretty big in diameter. So it only takes a few passes to go around. Um, you may not have one. You can definitely use a smaller standard end mill if you want to, um, but normally you will use a face mill. What is special about a face mill, and I'm just gonna hit select here, is that it normally um, have insert on it. So let's talk a little bit about tools or cutters uh, that there is. The, the standard cutter uh, would probably, let me just hit okay to this and call up another model here. Um, this is what we maybe would call a standard type of face mill or insert cutter is also another word. What we have is we have a piece of um, uh, steel and this one here actually gets screwed into a different holder here. But what is the, the interesting thing is you have these carbide inserts and this one have three of them. Um, a face mill maybe have, um, you know, anything from three to maybe, I don't know, 16, 20 of these small insert and they can only be rotated uh, for, for different uh, sides. So when you wear off, you know, one tip on this one here, you can rotate it 180 degrees and then you can actually get in and use the other end of it. Um, these can be pretty expensive, um, and, but they're normally used for something like, like facing off versus a standard cutter, but looks more like this. Um, we normally today only use these out of carbide. And again, all these tooling again can be bought out of like this MSC catalog I said before, and I'm not sponsored by them, um, but it's just a, a easy way to get these tools. And you can buy the cutters in there. So this is a solid cutter, but it's a lot smaller. And you will actually see this one has more teeth on it. Now I actually normally, I wouldn't recommend you buying this type of cutter. Um, and the reason is that this is a this is not center cutting. You can see that the, the, the bottom of it here is cutting around, but it's not cutting across. So you will actually end with a little stop here so it couldn't plunge straight down. Normally you will buy what is called center cutters. I stole these out on grabcad.com. So let's just want to show you the models. Now, 
when we're talking about the standard colors, if you have to pick some of these up, one of the questions is, first of all, what sizes should you get? Well, if you're getting over um, probably something like, um, I would think anything like 20 millimeters or, or one inch colors, and they're extremely expensive. You probably want to go down to like a 10, maybe a 16 millimeter uh, cutter to 10 millimeter cutter. Or if you're doing it in, in inches, normally, you know, if you're getting over a half an inch, uh, they get pretty pricey. Um, and uh, then the number of flute you, you, you need in here is also uh, depending on what material you're cutting. So I would normally, if you're just looking for default cutters, I'm looking for three flutes, uh, three or four flutes. The, the more flutes you have, in theory, the faster you can, you can go because as you're machining down the side of the, uh, of the material, the more teeth, the faster you can, you know, the faster more teeth will get engaged. Uh, the problem is that the, the, so you could say that you want more teeth, but the material also have to go between the teeth, right? So if you're cutting something soft like aluminum, having a free flute, there's plenty of room for the chip to be within when you're cutting it off. Uh, so free flute, four flute is probably a good standard to buy if you're looking to buy it. And make sure you get what is called a center cutting. So one of the teeth are actually cutting across the center. So if you're going straight down into material, cut away. But for the phasing operation we are doing, we normally are using what we call an insert cutter, a little bit of bigger of a cutter. And we do that because, you know, it will cost a lot in, in, sol, in, in, in carbide if we had to get such a big diameter. And this way we can just adjust the, the insert out of it. So let me go back into the facing operation here again where we were. So that's where we, we normally will select a facing mill for this. This is a 50 millimeter. So I have a couple of different inserts on it. Be aware of inside of this with the tools here that if you, you can actually go in and edit uh, this specific tool. So if I go in here, you will actually see this may be a better representation of an insert uh, face mill here. You can see the different carbide uh, teeth and they might look a little bit different some might have eight sides on them or something um, but that's here and you can of course ch change things in here so if you had a, a a 30 millimeter you could change it to a 30 millimeter and you could save it out in, into the library but that's what we're going to select a 50 millimeter facing operation the next one down here we get coolant so inside of fusion 360 cam there is actually uh, a lot of good options when it comes to to doing uh, the coolant in here. And um, normally flooding just means that we are um, having all the coolant blasting down. And the coolant or the flooding do for the coolant does a couple of different things. Of course, it cools down um, uh, things, but normally if you're having the right feeds and speeds, and that's the next thing we're gonna talk about, then uh, all the heat should actually go with your chip. So your parts, your steel should actually be cold when you're machining that. But what the flooding does is it helps removing, washing away the chips. Because there's one thing that especially carbide cutters don't like to do is cutting into, car into chips that you've already machined off, into shavings, like if it was wood. It don't like to hit that already machined shaving. So the coolant can make sure that that gets washed away from our surface we are cutting. A lot of different options in here. Flooding is a normal one. Uh, a lot of high-end machines today are using through coolant. So actually coolant can go through the tool uh, and, and that can be a little bit more efficient. You, some companies also using air. Many times if you're machining really hard stuff, hardened steel, you will use air instead of coolant. Um, so a lot of different options. We're just gonna leave it on standard coolant. Now, feeds and speeds is already a tricky one to deal with. And here, what I recommend you is that you actually maybe make a relationship with uh, whoever you're going to buy your cutters from. So if you if you decide that you're going to buy cutters out of MSC, I'll definitely deal with the MSC cutter uh, guy. If you're buying like cutters like Goering or or even uh, you know that's the, all different kinds of manufacturers, call them and talk to them about the feeds and speeds. Um, because one of the things about, they will always recommend you feeds and speeds, but they're very conservative because of course, if the tool breaks, then um, it's their fault, right? If you use the right feeds and speeds. 
Um, but always use them as consultant and creating a relationship with them is not a bad deal at all. One of the things I have tried too is that I would use their recommended feeds and speeds and then the tool would break. And then when you call them up, they're happy to replace the tool. Um, they might even also be willing to lend you some tools if you promise you buy them if, if the tool really does what they say it does. So just be aware of that the feeds and speeds is definitely something you want to use your car manufacturers. And many times if you get the catalog, it will be in um, inside of in the back that would have all the feeds and speeds. Um, you can, of course, also download apps for your phone. There's some really good apps out there, too. Some of them by you know, the car manufacturers, so you can use those too. So now you can get an excuse to stand on your phone in front of your machine to calculate feet and speeds. I'm not gonna set the feet and speeds here. Really on the cam side of it, it's really about what the car manufacturer uh, recommend. Now the next tab over here is geometry. Now when I select on geometry, this is where we're gonna pick what we're gonna machine. But since this is a phasing operation, notice that the software is smart enough to put a boundary box around our part. Uh, so we actually don't, if you're facing off the part, we actually don't have to, to select any geometry because the, the, the software is smart enough to know that, well, this is the boundary around the part. Is this just what you want to face? So I'm actually good here at this point just to go in and select my tool on the first tab. We will choose what we want to do with our coolant and put in whatever feeds and speeds we get from our um, car manufacturer and we don't even have to select any um, geometry here we're going to get through all these different tabs as we program this part but i'm going to hit okay and now you will see that we get excellent representation of the tool path right on our part so yellow is a rabbit green is feeding in blue means it's actually in contact with the steel what we can do in Fusion 360 is we can go up here to Actions and we can hit the Play button here and you can choose if you want to show the stock or not show the stock. So this will be the dimensions we put into our job setup when we did that. So if I choose not to show it, um, we can go in here, we can hit the Play button and we can kind of like see it playing through and we can kind of like see how it's going across, just decking off the top of our parts exactly what we want. Um, if I do turn it on, and I start it over here again, you will actually see that we do get a little step down here that will show us how much we're machining off. So this is one of the neat things about using the right stock sizes because this is actually showing us what's gonna happen out of the machine. And again, with these face mills, really use the cutter manufacturer's recommendations for the depth of cut, for the step over, and also for, for the feats and speeds. So what we just did was we have actually programmed our first toolpath. We programmed the toolpath to deck off, uh, deck off the part. Now, there's definitely a lot more toolpath to be done to this part. However, this is maybe a good time, especially if you're fairly new, to post this code out, go out to your machine, run this, check it, make any changes if you need to, and then come back and program the next operation. You know, breaking it down just makes it a little bit easier. If you're programming all these different tool paths to finish this part, and you have now this long program, you go out to the machine, you know, if you're getting two or three operations in and you suddenly figure out, oh, I did something completely wrong, that's a lot to go in and repost out and work with. So actually at this point, I'm gonna say close, and I'm gonna go over to the uh, operation here and I'm gonna post this out so I'm gonna hit that and what it will do here is it will give you all the different posts that Fusion 360 ships with what is neat about Autodesk Fusion 360 is that all these posts are actually free they have a post team so you don't have to pay for your post so if there's anything that needs to be changed uh, they will actually help you with that um, and you will find all different kinds of posts in here so I'm pretty sure you will find something that will fit pretty close to your machine. Um, if you need any more help with this, um, they actually have a forum called um, camforum, camforum.autodesk.com. And if you go there, um, you can get uh, post support. I'll throw the link uh, for that here in the video. So you can just click on that. Um, I'm, I'm going to go in here and I'm actually going to find just what is called a Haas Generic. And uh, then I can choose where I'm going to throw this post folder out to, uh, you know, USB drive or something. You can put a 
program number in here. When I used to work a lot in the industry, I used to use 7500 just because nobody else did, so that I knew that a 7500 program was mine. And then you can post it out. I was gonna throw this out on my desktop so we can take a look at it. It actually comes out with this little uh, navigator here that will show you the code, but I actually prefer to go uh, out on my desktop and just click on the program itself because Fusion 360 ships with this Inventor HSM editor, but it's really powerful. Now, when we're looking at the code here, see, this is what is nice about posting it out per operation, especially if you're new, is that it's very condensed. You can kind of like look at it and it gives you, you know, if there's something you need to change, it's not, you know, thousands of lines of code. And just to run through it quickly so you can we can find out what we're looking for. So you see the program in the beginning. It actually gives us a little uh, telling us what tool we're using. Anything in brackets on standard CNC machines is not read by the machine. So it's actually just code for you. Um, then we have some G codes. And again, if you have your machine manual, this should tell you in the machine manual what these codes are. And you can confirm that this is the right ones. Down here, it will tell us that it's tool number one and M6 is the tool chains. This is actually our spindle starting with an M3, and it will give us the, how fast it's going. There was the G54 I talked about when we we're picking up the part out of the machine. M8 is our coolant, and then the rest of these codes are all about moving along. So you know before I said that our X and Y should be, X should always be plus, and Y should always be uh, minus in the way we set up our work coolant up on the upper up at the corner. So this is actually good to send out to the machine and try to, to dig off the machine. So I re recommend that you kind of like breaking your tool path uh, down like that. 